Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be wrapping up my reading from 2017 and talking about my plans for 2018. With 12 minutes to spare on December 31st, 2017, I finished my 50th book for the year, completing my Goodreads goal which is very similar to how I accomplished my goal in 2016. I read 50 books. It would take a really long time to show you all of those. So if you want to see everything that I read in 2017, I will link my Goodreads page down below. But I will be sharing with you the books that I read for the 2017 Modern Mrs. Darcy Reading Challenge. I actually put more than one book for each category on my blog. I ended up reading a lot of books that fit into each category, so I just put everything that fit just to like make sure people knew that I accomplished each goal and I I finished it. I will link the blog post down below if you want to see every single book in each category, but for today I'm just going to be showing you one from each category. First up is a book you chose for the cover, Wicked Autumn by G.M. Mallier. This is a cozy mystery, and I really enjoyed this book. Also, the cover is gorgeous. As soon as I read it and knew that I loved it, I bought the entire series. Well, I bought the next book, and then I got the rest of the series for Christmas. But, yeah, if you're really into, like, cozy mysteries set in... In English Village, this is the book for you. A book with a reputation for being unputdownable. For this one, I stepped out of my comfort zone and read Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, which ended up being one of my favorite books of the year. This is like a sci-fi book, which I never read, but everyone was raving about it and I ended up loving it. I haven't read the last two books yet, the third one not being out yet, but I just feel like this might become one of my favorite series of all time. Big statement, but it's just that addictive, that good, and I absolutely loved it. A book set somewhere you've never been but would like to visit. The Curse of the Pharaohs by Elizabeth Peters, which is set in Egypt. I think I've mentioned this before, but I am really fascinated by Egyptology. I really want to visit Egypt and see the pyramids and visit the museum. It's just, it's so cool. And this book is not only set in Egypt, it's actually about archaeology and Egyptology. So I'm like a major fangirl when it comes to this Amelia Peabody series. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, I would highly recommend this series. It is so good. A book you've already read. I reread so many books last year, I didn't even realize until I made my list. But I'm going to be showing you a couple of books because they're all from my childhood. I reread the first three books of The Babysitter's Club by Anne M. Martin. And actually, the last book that I read in 2017 was Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And I just forgot how much I loved these books. I still love them, even as an adult. And <laughs> I really want to keep reading. I only have these Babysitter's Club books. I kind of wish I had kept the ones I owned back in the day, but I gave them away. So I don't know if I'll keep collecting them, but it is very tempting because I really enjoyed these books. This one, I have the whole series, so I can just keep going. A Juicy Memoir. I don't know how juicy this is, but it is a fantastic book to read if you love Carol Burnett and The Carol Burnett Show. This is In Such Good Company, 11 Years of Laughter, Mayhem, and Fun in the Sandbox by Carol Burnett. This is all about what went on behind the scenes of the show as well as on screen all about guests and cast members and all of that. And the ending actually made me cry. 
just her wrapping up what it felt like to say goodbye to the show and I really love Carol Burnett and the Carol Burnett show and all the cast members so I really enjoyed this book. A book about books or reading. I finally read The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. This book was amazing. I cried like a baby. If you haven't read it, what are you doing with your life? You need to read it. It's amazing. A book in a genre you usually avoid. I've already talked about science fiction, so now I'm going to talk about contemporary. Now, you know how much I love crime and mystery books. Those are genres that I really enjoy. When those books take place in contemporary times, I'm okay with it. But for some reason, just like normal contemporary fiction, romance, drama, whatever, I'm just like not into it. I'd rather read about like times past. I did read The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. The premise of it was so promising and it really disappointed me at the end. It was about this girl who moves to Scotland and starts like this little bookmobile business and the whole idea of it was so cute and fun and then the ending just felt like an insta-love romance and there wasn't even really closure in terms of the bookmobile business so I was just like oh ugh like this is why I hate contemporary a book you don't want to admit you're dying to read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by JK Rowling now you're probably wondering why in the heck I'd be ashamed to read this I chose this book for this category not because I'm embarrassed that I wanted to read it. I was embarrassed that I never read it because this series is so popular. Everyone raves about it. I would never read a Harry Potter book in my life. I read it and I loved it. And I ended up finishing Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, and Goblet of Fire last year as well. I started Order of the Phoenix and I don't know why I didn't finish it because I love it. I don't know. I <sighs> book slumps are really getting me down. Especially in the past few years, it's really bad. But I'm sure that I'll finish the series this year. I really love it. A book in the backlist of a new favorite author. In the past year or two, I discovered Tessa Afshar, who I really love. For Christmas in 2016, I received a bunch of her books, including Pearl in the Sand, which I don't know if it's her first book ever written. It might be, actually. If it's not her first book, it's one of her first books ever written. And I read it, and it was so good. This book is about Rahab from the Bible. She's the prostitute who helped hide the two spies that Joshua sent to scope out Jericho and not much is known about Rahab based on the Bible alone so obviously this book is fiction but the way Tessa writes is so believable it just like blends right in with the source material but she's still respectful of what she's writing about a book recommended by someone with great taste I don't really have friends that I talk to in person about books. So all the books I read in this category were recommended by bookstagrammers and booktubers. One of the books I read is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is talked about a lot. Some people don't like it. Most people like it. One such person being Clockwork Reader from Booktube. This is like her favorite book. And she's one of my favorite booktubers, so I would say that I trust her opinion. And I ended up loving it. For some reason, it was slightly disappointing at the end, but it was still a solid read. I don't know, the like magical circus aspect of it, I was, I was all in. I, 
couldn't stop reading, I couldn't put it down. I really enjoyed it, and I would recommend it to anyone who hasn't read it. A book you were excited to borrow or buy but haven't read yet. Do you know how many books that applies to? Maybe 75% of the books in my room I haven't read yet, but I've been saying, oh, I'm definitely getting to that next. It's not true. The book I'm sharing with you is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I actually watched the BBC miniseries first, and it was so good that I knew I had to pick up the book. Picked it up, and I still waited to read it, because that's just how life goes. Finally picked it up, and oh my gosh, this was so good. Hands down, one of my favorite Agatha books. I know this is a book video, I shouldn't be talking about TV, but the BBC miniseries is fantastic. It's also scary, like, it's pretty creepy. It's great. I would recommend reading the book and watching the miniseries. So good. The final category is a book about a subject or topic you already love. A lot of books to choose from, but I'll say My True Love Gave to Me 12 Holiday Stories by various authors, edited by Stephanie Perkins. I love the holidays, and that's what this anthology is all about. I wish I had actually liked the anthology. I actually kind of hated it. I'm sorry, but it just, I wasn't into hardly any of the stories. I didn't even love one story. I l kind of liked a few of them, but I didn't love any of them. That wraps up the 2017 Modern Mrs. Darcy Challenge. Like I said, there are links down below if you want to check out all the books I read for each category. That's on my blog, or you can go to my Goodreads page and see all 50 books that I read. I'm following my pattern of the past two years. I've added five books to my Goodreads goal. Risky. So I'm planning on reading 55 books. I'm off to a great start. I've read one book <laughs> this month. I'm about to finish my second book, so things are kind of looking up but I do need to pick up the pace. I'm trying not to push myself, but I do want to start reading more because I miss it. I really gotta beat these book slumps because they're bumming me out. It just needs to go away. I don't know if I'm participating in the 2018 Modern Mrs. Darcy Challenge. I think I might be taking a break this year, but I might be participating, so I'll just mention the categories, as well as the books that I'm considering reading for the categories. A classic you've been meaning to read, A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle, a book recommended by someone with great taste, to be determined, a book in translation, The Time in Between by Maria Duenas, a book nominated for an award in 2018, to be determined, a book of poetry, a play, or an essay collection, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. A book you can read in a day, Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls Wilder. A book that's more than 500 pages, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. A book by a favorite author, Murder at the Vicarage by Agatha Christie. A book recommended by a librarian or indie bookseller, To Be Determined. A banned book, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. A memoir, biography, or book of creative nonfiction, Talking As Fast As I Can, From Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls and Everything In Between by Lauren Graham. A book by an author of a different race, ethnicity, or religion than your own, Harvest of Gold by Tessa Afshar. I hope you've enjoyed this wrap up. I know it's a bit late, but better late than never. I would love to hear how you did in 2017 with your reading, as well as what you're planning to read in 2018. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the red button down below to subscribe and become a member of my YouTube family. Also, click the bell to turn on your notifications. I will see you in my next video. Bye!